How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're gonna take a look at some practice problems for 20.4 cell electromotive force, sometimes abbreviated as EMF, the electromotive force. So objectives will be to use standard reduction potentials of each half cell in a voltaic cell to calculate the electromotive force EMF, AKA cell potential. So this is the equation, right? It's the voltage of the cell under standard conditions is equal to the uh, reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. And the reason that it's a minus here is because at the anode you have oxidation, which is the opposite of reduction. So on the chart that they give you all the values, those are for being reduced. So if you're doing the opposite of reduction, well then you need to subtract that value because you're doing the opposite. Uh, I don't often think of this equation when I'm doing the math, uh, but that's what this equation is showing. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So which one of the following most, is most likely to be a good oxidizing agent? So remember agents cause the thing. So what is going to cause oxidation? It does the opposite, right? Just like a drying agent, that's not how you spell opposite. There you go. Like a towel is a drying agent. It causes things to dry. But what does what happens to the towel itself? It gets wet. So an oxidizing agent is a thing that's going to get reduced. So which one of these things is most likely to be reduced? Well, if I take a look at metals, they're more likely to be oxidized. So it's not going to be these two metals. Uh, which one of these is the most likely to be reduced? It's going to be the halogens those group 17 elements they're most likely to get reduced the reduction half reaction occurring in a standard hydrogen electrode is what so we're talking about reduction so if we're talking about hydrogen being reduced it's got to start as a positive value uh, and then it becomes h with no charge but hey it's one of those brinkelhoffs it's a diatomic molecule so it's got to be h2 All right so now we got to balance this well balance everything that's not hydrogen or oxygen. Well, you know, this is kind of a trick because hydrogen is the thing. I got to put a two in front of the H plus. So now I got to balance the charges. Well, I have plus two on the left and I have zero on the right. So how am I going to balance that? Well, I got to add two electrons to the left side to bring that overall charge down to zero as well. Now the charges are equal. And here I go. This is my standard hydrogen electrode reduction. This is the, uh, what we say is zero, right? When you have to, let's say, pick an elevation if you, and you've never seen the ocean, you don't know what sea level is, you just have to pick a location that goes, hey, this is zero, and this is our zero. And number three, the more blank the value of the E naught reduction, the greater the driving force for reduction. So here it is the more positive. So positive values or positive volts means it is motivated. All right, it gets kind of confusing because like delta G, if that's negative, it's spontaneous for E. It's a positive voltage means it's, it's gonna happen, right? It's There's a greater driving force, the more positive it is. All right, number four, the standard cell potential for the voltaic cell based on the reaction below is what? So again, we can go back to that equation from the beginning of the video, but my mind doesn't work like that. I go, all right, let me see what's what's going on. I got Sn plus 2 becoming Sn plus 4. How could that happen? Well, it must have lost two electrons. So I'm going to look for this reaction, but all of these are for reduction. And what I just wrote out is an oxidation. So I'm going to look for the opposite of that. And I find it right here. All right, so normally for reduction, this is the voltage, the point. 154. But since I'm doing the opposite process, it becomes a negative 0.154. That's how likely or motivated the opposite reaction would be. So I go, all right, I got a negative 0.154 volts for this one. Now let me see what's going on with iron. Fe plus three, arrow, Fe plus two. I'm not worried really about the coefficients right now. I'm just trying to find out what the half reaction is. All right, so this was a three. So in order for that to happen, well, there must be one electron here. 
So since this is a reduction, I'm just gonna try to match it to my chart. It should match perfectly because this is a reduction and hey, look, I find it in this process. Since it's the same process, I keep the sign the same. So it's a positive 0.771 volts. So if I wanna know what is the driving force, what is the voltage of this process, I just now have to combine those terms, right? When I flipped it, that's where that minus sign came from. Um, so now I just combine those and I'm not good at mental math. So I'm just gonna look at what I wrote down. I end up with a positive 0.617 volts. All right, let's try another one. Number five, the standard cell potential or E naught for the voltaic cell based on the reaction below is how many volts? All right, um, well, let's see. I got CR solid, so it's zero, becoming CR plus three. How did that happen? Well, it must have lost three electrons. All right, that's how I get my charges to balance. So since this is oxidation, I have to look for the opposite reaction and I find it in this first one. And since it's the opposite reaction, I have to change the sign from negative to a positive. So positive 0.74 volts is how likely this process is to occur. All right, well, let's check out iron. Iron started with a plus three arrow becomes Fe plus two. How did that happen? Well, it must have gained one electron. So since this is reduction, just look for the exact same thing on the chart. I find it right here. And since it's the same process, I don't change the value at all. So I add these together and I end up with a 1.511 volts. Now for this process, these coefficients don't matter, all right? Um, you can ignore them in this math. Number six, the standard cell potential for the voltaic cell based on the reaction below here. All right, more of the same, but different. Well, I start with CR0 and I end up with CR plus three. So I go, all right, uh, CR0, arrow, CR plus three. It must have done that by losing three electrons. Uh, so I look for the opposite process up here. It's this half reaction. Since it's a negative 0.74 in the opposite direction, I got to change the sign. So I end up with a positive 0.74 volts. Now the Fe goes from a plus two to an Fe zero. So how did it do that? It must have gained two electrons. So I gotta look for the exact right here. Oh, hey, look here, Fe plus two becomes Fe zero. And because it's exactly how it is, I don't have to change the sign at all, 0 0.440 volts. And when I combine those together, I end up with a positive 0 0.30 volts. All right, number seven, the standard cell potential. All right, more of the same, but different. Here we go. We got tin SN plus four becoming SN plus two. How did that happen? Well, it must have gained two electrons. And then, all right, chromium CR was zero and it became CR plus three. It must have done that by losing three electrons. So reduction process, let me find that somewhere in here. Here it is. So I got a positive. 0.154 volts that's a v and now here for the chromium i got to find the opposite let me find the reduction version hey it's 0.74 to the negative but because i'm talking about oxidation instead the opposite process the number stays the same but i change the sign so now when i combine these terms together i end up with a 0.89 volts really be like 0.894 volts but if we were to follow precision rules for sig figs and stuff there you go all right eight true or false when the cell potential is positive in a voltaic cell the reaction will not proceed spontaneously this one is a false statement that could be made true by crossing out the word not so positive e naughts equals spontaneous all right, the standard reduction potential, E0 red, is proportional to the sto stoichiometric coefficient. It's false as well. It is, is not proportional. So you can ignore the coefficients when you're calculating the E0. All right, number 10, the standard reduction potential of X is this many volts, and that of Y is that many volts. So therefore, X is reduced by Y. This is a true statement.
So we have a positive 1.23 volts, and for Y, its reduction potential is negative um, 0.44. So if I were to do the oxidation of that, that'd be a positive 0.44. And if I added those together, I end up with a positive value. It's like 1.67 volts. That means that will be spontaneous. If you have Y reacting with X, X will get reduced and Y will be oxidized. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.